quite often much attention is paid to the first part of the data values chain, i.e. how do we go from data to insight, but much less value or much less attention is paid to how do we go from insight to decisions or from insight to action. And so from my point of view, if we really want data to be disruptive, we also have to disrupt the way we go about making decisions these days. We really have to think about how do we go from data intelligence and turn it into decision intelligence. And I think it's really important to remember that data is about people. When we talk about what insights we are seeking and why Indigenous data sovereignty is important, when you're talking about transforming reality, so the descriptive thing, like whose reality are we talking about? Because the people analysing the data, it's usually their reality. And so if you're a minority or from a different background or have a different culture, that data is not going to reflect your reality, which is why this stuff is important. The way that I came to this was because I noticed that when we can represent data across space, um, so for example, mapping data. And so one example that I like to give is when I was working um, at Plan International and I um, decided that I really wanted to push for this project called free to be It ended up being Australia's first ever crowd mapping platform for women to map street harassment. I realised that, you know, I could actually show decision makers all of these stories and to the, the women and non-binary people reporting, they were their stories, um, but on a map they became data. And that was kind of my awakening. We can't do everything. And I'm concerned that we end up doing nothing or whatever the policymaker's particular flavor of the day is because we haven't had the appropriate conversation about priorities. It's not just the priorities around the questions, although I think that's important, but it's also priorities around which data sets will we invest in?